Hello, everybody. Welcome to Left of Center. Deep throat. That is so <laughs> disgusting. Like right Wait, off that, the bat. That's a Watergate. Like right off the it's bat. It's a Watergate reference. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's not where you were going. I know. You, <laughs> well, you that's not where ass. you were thinking. You nasty, nasty that, no, person. Right off the bat, man. Literally like the fourth word, Kevin. Dude, Dude did throat. you hear that? <laughs> oh, my God. Our, our viewers are dropping like right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, like, I think right they're off in, the bat. Apparently, they're increasing. You're killing it. You're killing us. <laughs> Freaking talking what did about you do porn. Last night, like right off the bat, he's talking Slept about porn. Late. I worked on a memo for Tom. How about yeah, that? Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> like whose first thing in the morning is talking talking about porn? Like right off the bat. I didn't do that. I yeah, was a water. You're reference. like deep throat. Yeah, I know what you were doing at work reference. last night. You nasty ass. <laughs> you guys are gross. I, right, who's Lindsay. gross? Like you guys. I just start <laughs> doing my job. I'm on Kevin's side. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. I'm on Kevin's side. I happen to like history. I thought you did too, Dad. Yeah. Whatever. This yeah. there's a common thread with Kevin. You got that like looking at his poster, that thing from a while. I'm gonna back. get him that poster, by the way. <laughs> it's gonna be, I am. We're gonna hang way, it right up above just, his head. It's, Farrah interp- Fawcett. it's misinterpretation of of comments. Who says a porn title right off the bat? <laughs> who, who, who does that? Like, <laughs> I didn't even know that was a porn title. You didn't oh, know. No, I was like, <laughs> seriously, you're the only guy <laughs> in America that doesn't know that's a porn <laughs> title. I was talking about Nixon. What are you talking about? <laughs> Although, in Kevin's defense, before we went on the air, he asked Lindsay and I what BRB meant. That's true. <laughs> Do you know That's what it means? Some bullshit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't say it because it's not look bring who's... your. It's not bring your own beer. So hold look, on. Look at this. John. Be right back. Be right back. Thank you. Be there right we back. go. He Old guys, <laughs> bring your own beer. It was not yeah. bad. Byob. Brb. Yes. I didn't know. Like I can figure them out. I'm really good at acronyms. Uh-huh. There you go. I am. I generally am too, which is why I was upset. I didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Sorry. I bet if I said, <sighs> I got one for you. God, you're so. I'm a man of the Commodore 64. What do I? What can I say? Ancient. Hey, Lindsay, have you ever used Bumble before? No. Really? I'm happily Don't. married. But no, no, like, no, no. We you weren't say, always we happily say married. Yesterday, we were like, this could have been. You could <laughs> it's have been It's like a very recent <laughs> application that was created. I used Tinder in college, but oh, wow, this is talk started. about porn. I mean, what? What the hell are you thinking about my daughter? Kevin? No, I'm just nasty. saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, Tinder is the bad one. <laughs> You're like talking about my daughter to be the bad like, one. Tinder is the naughty one. John, right? Tinder is the naughty one. John, right off yeah. the bat, dude. Did you hear like, what John just said? <laughs> talking about my Tinder's daughter. Tinder is the porn. naughty one. <laughs> really? He just said that. <laughs> There's our title for the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so anyway, Kevin and I are getting experienced with Bumble. Ew. <laughs> you may ask why. Marissa is like scratching her head <laughs> right now. <laughs> Let me let me tell you. A this, coffee mug just dropped on the kitchen yeah, floor. This is like really. She's calling the divorce. She's like you're going, already. you're going there, huh? Right. So anyway, Kevin and I got acquainted with Bumble a couple weeks ago on a ski trip with Doctor Forite. Yeah. When he was dumb enough to let us have his phone, <laughs> and we were like, because Doctor Forite's on Bumble, ladies. Doctor Forite's on Bumble, available. Yeah. Doctor is, is available on he Bumble. He is a sexy doctor on Bumble. I'm just last week, up. I think last week you called him a bald ass. Well, he's my friend. I'm, he's a sexy, he's a bald, bald ass, ass, sexy doctor. <laughs> on Bumble, <laughs> comfortable with his baldness. Yeah, very but, much so. So anyway, Doctor Mike, looking guy. Doctor Mike gives us his phone, and Kevin and I immediately go to work. Well, no, he was like, "We're on Bumble," and we we're like, "Wait, let me see that. How does that work?" Because he's like, "No, I'm not letting you." And we're like, "Dude, we're married. This is we, we never can't do, do this. this. We could do it for you. We can't do it for us." We enjoyed it. Yeah. So we went through and we picked some winners for Doctor Mike, and it was like all like. You know, I would really like to see him with these women. We weren't like being funny. But the, he would, he disagreed a lot with it. Remember, we were like, "What about what about her? She's nice. She's good looking." Well, you She's... guys are much more conservative, personal like wise than he is. He's yeah. Doctor Mike's got different taste for sure. Yeah, I don't, you guys he, have a different taste. I'm sure that's sure. true. Yeah, significantly how does Bumble work for those that don't know? What what did you? What, how it's did like you the mean? one where like it's just a bunch of men and women. You like type in your preferences and then. Like age range like and stuff like shows that. up on your screen. The Geography. Screen. Like yeah. if you want to be in the region, like you it's stick like to like twenty five miles. If you want to like get into Chicago and you go out to like you know fifty miles, and so anyway. And you go through and you swipe. You swipe, you swipe left, right. Left is no. Right, right is, is yes. But so that was confusing a little bit. We misswiped a couple times. Don't say we. <laughs> Kevin misswiped quite a few times actually. <laughs> Four rights dealing with the consequences already. One of those. <laughs> We're like, which way do you swipe left? again? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> he swiped left on like his soulmate, man, and now they'll never find him. I, 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 I ruined his soulmate. I pointed that out. I pointed that out. But yeah. anyway, so we have a good friend of ours. Let's just say that mm-hmm. we're not going to divulge her name. No, it's a Whoa. it's a friend of ours, Kevin and mine. Not your guys' though. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give anything away here, but she's on she's on Bumble. We found out, and so Kevin Would and you I find her. She showed no, up. On. Kevin no, Kevin and I took her phone because that's what we did with Doctor Mike, and we started scouting men for her. Did you find Doctor Mike? 
That I was looking for. <laughs> we Dr. were looking. Ryan. We I were looking because they would be a good couple. <laughs> and I, you know, but anyway, we were swiping, and then uh, I don't know. I think Kevin's going to show up to the first date. <laughs> I'm going to vet these people. Yeah, like, like let's just call mm. him Joe. Joe shows up. He's expecting to find. Let's just say. <laughs> Lisa, okay, sure. we'll just throw this name out there. So Joe's expecting to show up to Gambas and find Lisa. Instead, there's Kevin sitting at the table. <laughs> Hello, right? are you Joe? <laughs> you probably Hello. expect to find Lisa, Hello, right? Hello, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Joe. I have a, some follow-up questions. I'd like to make it clear I'm the one that picked I you, Joe. I swiped you. Yeah. I swiped you right. <laughs> what I really like about you, Joe, is your background. I is. is... <laughs> I love that picture of you. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> Uh, Kevin, was, Kevin was really no, getting into I it. I stopped. No, I was. It's, it's interesting. I was just thinking how crazy it would be if that existed, like when I was single. It's been crazy. I mean, that, that, that still stuff is out. crazy. <laughs> I, I would have had no. And, you oh, would still a, struck out. Another, I, it's I'm even sure more depressing. True. I'm sure that's like, true. Technology makes it so easy, and I still can't. And you're get like, it, right? why isn't anyone swiping me? Because <laughs> that's another thing we learned with Forite is that it's the Bumble is the app where the women control. Like they oh, have to swipe I didn't even you. Notice. Like you could swipe five hundred women. If they don't swipe you, really, you don't connect. Hmm. That's hmm. what that's we learned. That's a strategy. From right. Like that's men sexist. just swipe right for every single woman who comes up, Whoa. and then whenever they show up, you know that it's meant to be. I don't think I would do that. I don't think I just swipe right no, five hundred times. Be, yeah, but because there's some people on some there people that I wouldn't swipe right on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure they are. So anyway, Bumble's <laughs> awesome. Like for those of you, that it was are out enjoyable. There, it's very cool, and uh, you know, I hope that we hooked up our friend Lisa with uh, with quotations. <laughs> Lisa, hope I'll Lisa, be there to meet Joe. Lisa, Don't worry, we got Joe. We got a little uh, meeting with Joe coming up. L- Lisa, and uh, we're gonna check him out for you, Kevin and I both. That was something. showing up to True Barbecue. And thank you for the entertainment to both Lisa and Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, yeah, I think Dr. Mike's still. Why getting... are we like blocking the lady's name but not Dr. Mike's name? Does because Dr. Mike doesn't, he care. doesn't care. We don't want. <laughs> we don't want. <laughs> this is Lisa. good for Dr. Mike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't want he Lisa to be single nervous. ladies. Yeah. That's right. That uh, Lisa may not want us to like reveal her identity. Yes, but she's on there. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> if you find our friend Lisa. Good luck. Yeah, that's what Whose it. name is not Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Friday, we have a big show. Very big show. You know? That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's I like actually, a real guest, like a, our second real guest. I mean, no, no offense to <laughs> any of take, our previous guests. Take that, Richard Leverett. <laughs> yeah. No offense to our previous guests, but this is like a big time guest. We've like, had dozens of guests. Yeah, the, the guests uh, are like, like, fuck you, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Way to go, mayor. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, asshole. <laughs> like, I'm never coming on that for right, podcast. For example. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, we're losing friends and guests. And so. if people watching, too. I guess all our former guests are now dropping off. That's right. Uh, Joe Donnelly, U.S. Senator. That's yes. pretty badass. Former U.S. Senator uh, Joe Donnelly, former U.S. Representative, good friend to Kevin and myself. I've known Joe. Professor back to, at Notre Dame. Professor at Notre attorney Dame. Attorney in Washington. Yeah, wow. man. He's and friend of the Biden administration. Yeah. He's going to be a great guest on Friday. Uh, we're going to have him on the air. And we're going to ask him the questions you want us to. So Yeah. I mean, Joe, is uh, he fits right in. He's probably, uh, well, he was, you know, he was voted right down the middle, right? Number 50. Number 50 in, for the, uh, in the middle of the Senate. So that's where he sits. And Which is a great place to sit in my book. In, especially in Indiana. Wasn't good enough wasn't to good get enough elected. To get him, you know, not, not to some... Like, uh, God damn you, you cannot be reasonable and moderate in the Senate. You know, we're not going to... We're not going to tolerate that, but not under President Trump, right? right. That's right. how Senator Braun won. So, but Joe yes. Donnelly is a great guy. He's going to be a great guest. We're going to talk a lot. And I was reading the Howie Political Report uh, about a week ago, maybe a couple weeks ago. Joe Donnelly was on the front cover saying Senator Joe Donnelly will not rule out a run in 2022. And as anybody that follows politics in Indiana, like Kevin and I do, uh, in 2022 in Indiana, there's going to be an open U.S. Senate seat. Uh, U.S. Senator Todd Young currently holds that. And normally a, a lot of people would think Todd's very safe. But after what happened with the Capitol riots on January 6th uh, and Todd's participation in, you know, in Trump and all of his lies and deceit, um, who knows? I've they, noticed, a guy like Joe Donnelly might take him to the bank. I've noticed that something must be resonating because he's been starting to distance himself from yes, some of that stuff. Totally which tells agreed. you that he knows. maybe he's starting to think about his reelect. Mm-hmm. So... It's, it's not about it, it's yeah he knows election day is coming and he knows his weakness is his participation in the insurrection and he did participate he wasn't there but well, he's, he's probably in session but he, he was wasn't. throwing fuel yeah. on the fire yeah. yeah i don't know i don't remember whether he, i know braun wasn't any help i don't remember what todd young was doing but it'll be interesting to see but you remember I, I do remember this about todd though he was on the steps of the senate telling him that he wasn't going to try to stop the uh 
the uh, yeah he did not count, he wasn't going to stop the count that's right, right. right. yeah so give him yeah I guess credit for that I guess. right and that had to be tough in front of yeah but and then I want to hit one uh, note of a downer it's definitely a downer uh, at the beginning of the show it wouldn't be right if we did the show without recognizing that Indiana's former first lady Susan By passed away uh, after her battle with brain cancer. Uh, 61, very young. Uh, obviously, the wife of US, our former governor and former U.S. Senator Evan Bayh. Uh Susan was a delightful person. She was wonderful, smart. She was an attorney, uh, great first lady, uh, sweetheart. Very politically astute, too. I mean, yeah. she was very, she knew her stuff. She was Evan's secret weapon. Yep, without a doubt. So, <laughs> you know, obviously, Susan Bayh, uh is going to be missed by Hoosiers across the land, by people across the United States of America. Um, we we also, in fact, in the city of Hammond, we're flying our flags at half mass, and I don't understand how a former first lady dies and it's not issued by the governor. And all states, all cities in Indiana are required to fly their flags at half mass. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. It's such a simple gesture. Like, why wouldn't the governor do that? It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's a former first lady. She lived eight years in the governor's mansion, and she did great. You know, yeah. for the, for Hoosiers across I the land. I don't think anybody. I've never heard a bad word about Susan By. I remember this, Kevin. I remember. You know, a, a friend, let's just say a relative, a, a, a relative of somebody who was involved in Hammond politics. I don't want to get into details. Passed away a few years ago. Let's just mm -hmm. put that out there, okay? And in respect and honor of the family who lost this very near and dear family member, we flew the flags at half mass in the city of Hammond, and the family appreciated it so much. It was such a. It's, it's a small. It's a nice gesture. It's a nice gesture from the city, and it doesn't. And you have the power to do that, as and mayor. it doesn't really cost us anything. Well, give it. Give the general assembly time; they'll probably tell us when we could raise and lower our flags <laughs> yeah. eventually. But Let's it's such a simple a gesture that that we did that shows respect to the family, and the family appreciated it so much. I don't understand how Governor Holcomb doesn't do the same thing. In the Maybe state they're of listening, and they'll do it. They should do it, Governor. That doesn't make any sense. In, every easy. city in town in Indiana should have their flags at half mass in honor of Susan By. Right I agree now. with that. It just makes no sense to me. Well, Mayor, this is... Uh, is it just because of the D? I hope not. I wouldn't think so. Maybe they just haven't got How could a former it. first lady, seriously, if if Governor Holcomb's wife passed away, unfortunately, we would fly our flags at half mass. Yeah, we don't wish that to happen. Lady. No, we sure, don't wish that to happen. But, yeah. like, a first lady is important, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're I don't get representative of the state. I guarantee you if Senator Hillary Clinton or former U.S. Senator Hillary Clinton passed, America would fly their flags at half mass. Of course. Right? Sure. But, like, a former first lady passes in Indiana... And maybe she was on the other party, so we don't recognize her. I would her. imagine if Donald Trump passed away, we'd have our flags at half mass. He's a president. Would we? I think you have to, <laughs> don't you? Crickets. You're crickets. Crickets. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right, uh, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. I had to how do about, a hard thug. Lindsay, about how about the... Uh, we were all like... I didn't say we'd want to, but I think you have to. He's a president. Um, so, Lindsay, do the... Uh, let's do your spiel. Uh, you're listening to Left of Center, where we cover everything from a politics to important events of the day in the Midwest and the nation, all while having way too much fun while doing it. If you can't get enough of us, follow us on Facebook or on Twitter at LockPod, L-O-C-P-O-D. And if you can't listen in live, you can download our episodes from the Apple Podcast or Spotify app and l listen to us at a crystal clear 620 kilohertz per second. Just Google Left of Center and look for a red and blue logo. Also, don't forget to subscribe and rate, my friends. Also, do you have money, a business, running for office, or you just like handing out money to struggling podcasts? Not struggling. We're pretty successful. We're struggling. Oh, we're, don't lie. We're not yeah. struggling. This is a sinking ship. <laughs> no. We're sinking. Send Listing. us an email <laughs> at leftofcenterpod <laughs> at gmail.com, and we can get your sponsorships rolling. Thank we're being you, foreclosed upon as we speak. No, we are not. Goddamn landlord. <laughs> evicted. Here. Do we hire a I business manager I take personal yet? offense at that, because I'm the one who's doing no. all these sponsorships. By the we way. We're doing very well. Speaking of which, we got yeah. a new one. A business manager? No, a new sponsor. <laughs> uh, we already went through one. We got a new one. Yeah. <laughs> we got if five. you got a new one without telling me, then. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, we do have a new sponsor. That's outstanding. Let's do it. All right, let's go. We're Beam, Longest, and Neff. Welcome to LockPod, Beam, Longest, and Neff. Woohoo! Beam, Longest, and Neff, or BLN for short, is an award-winning... <laughs> What's so funny about that, man? It's uh, just funny to me. I don't it know. is short. Is that, that, another, is that another porn reference that I missed? <laughs> yeah. Or is that an acronym that I didn't know? <laughs> it sounds like BLM. As in BLN is an award-winning cons consulting firm with experience in all facets of infrastructure projects. Founded in 1945, BLN has provided decades of expertise as a consulting firm. Guided by third-generation leadership, the core group of BLN partners and associates strive to remain leaders within the consulting community. Our history and experience has helped us define a clear vision to work toward 
total client satisfaction. For more information, call us at 1-800-382-5206. Beam, longest, and naff. Thank they you. do work for the city of Hammond. Um, if you see our bike trail bridges in the city, I guarantee you that this is the firm that built it. In fact, the new bike trail bridge that we're building between the town of Munster and the city of Hammond is being designed and built by on Beam. Chicago and River Drive. Yeah. Yeah, and it's being built by Beam Longest Night on, Chi- on Chicago. I'm sorry, Calumet and River yeah, Drive. Sorry right. about that. Thanks. They're yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, the, the and, and thank you for the new sponsorship. They and they do. I know they do like bridge highway they bridges do around the state. We use them for bridges. Midwest, yeah. yeah, but they do highway bridges. They do they do streets. They do everything. Uh, this is a full service firm. If you're looking for you know designing things, so BLN. Thank you. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, family owned since 1975. Tortillas Nuevo Leon has been a staple in the Mexican food industry for decades. Tortillas Nuevo Leon produces quality tortillas and crispy nacho chips locally and around the country. Stop by your grocery store and look for their popular red and white logo. For more information, check out their website at TortillasNuevoLeon.com. Metropolitan Steel. Metropolitan Steel is a proud union contractor and AISC Advanced Certified Erector with over 60 years of combined experience serving the Chicagoland area. All of Metropolitan Steel's work is performed to exact project specifications, engineered procedures, and code requirements. For more information, call us at 708-474-2072. That's Metropolitan Steel. As for Red, he's the one with the Belgian waffle. <laughs> Latitude Commercial. I added that last part. It was good. Yeah. Nice improv. Yeah. Latitude Commercial is a full-service commercial real estate brokerage and property management firm specializing in northern Indiana and the Chicago suburbs. Local tenants to national developers have benefited from Latitude's experience in the commercial real estate market. When you select Latitude Commercial, you get Chicagoland expertise with worldwide marketing and networking ability. Whether you're a developer looking to sell, a tenant looking to expand, an investor looking to purchase, or an owner in need of property management services, Latitude can help. Contact Latitude at 219-864-0200 or at latitudeco.com so they can get to work for you. I also saw recently that Aaron uh, was um, posting that they are in the in the – you know, mix for best real estate firm in North of Indiana. Oh, nice. So please vote awesome. for our sponsor, Latitude How can you Commercial. Um, Aaron will let, have to let us know. He sent me an email. I should have sent the link. Sorry, Lance. I'll get that for you. Miss Britt Printing with both Munster and Hammond locations. Rick Baltensberger and his team are there for absolutely all of your printing needs. Valentine's Day is Sunday. Don't forget your Valentine's something big and printed. Banners and signs of all sizes, from wrapping cars to business cards. No job is too big or too small. Call Rick or Teresa at 219-836-2517. Thank you, Miss Print, Latitude, Metropolitan Steel, Tortillas, Nuevo Leon, and Beam Longest and Net for being sponsors of Lock oh, I like that summary. Yeah, that's the way you should that do it. That was good. Stick with me, kid. I'm learning. I'll teach you. I'm learning from the I'll locomotive. Hey, if uh, you guys are interested in talking some firehouse shenanigans, we're going to go there today. Um, yes. We're going to talk about uh, the Mike Brown Accountability Bill, HB 1030. And I know we're going to talk some judicial uh, nominating. Yeah, commission. that's a crazy. That's bill exciting. Too. It's madness coming out of Indianapolis. It gives us endless things to talk about here on Lockpod. Just local, just taking away local after local ability to do whatever they want to do. Well, uh, before we get started, but like I said, I know a lot of people are probably listening because they want to hear about the story with the Hammond Fire Department and a noose that was found in Station Two. Um, obviously, that was the big story of the day last week. Something that we were dealing with last Friday and after uh, the pod. and actually after the pod, but also, well, we knew about it, but it became public at that point. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, I also wanted to review something we talked about on previous shows. Uh, the town of Highland last night, the Highland Town Council, if you remember, we had uh, a Councilman Shockey from the town of Highland on our show a couple weeks, a couple ago. weeks ago. Right. And Councilman Shockey was telling us about an ordeal that was going on in Highland that was very important about the future of a farm, a uh, Scaringa farm in Highland, and whether or not Scaringa farm was going to be continued as a farm or whether it was going to be converted into a, a senior assisted living. Yeah, center. it was an interesting topic about just how communities struggle with development versus history, right? Right. I thought that was a cool part of that, about that discussion. You want to talk a little bit about what the council did last night, Kev? Yeah, so as you, as everybody may recall who listened to that episode, there was a zoning, uh, it goes through the, it's about a rezone. Can the farm be rezoned to allow uh, the senior living facility? And it had gone through the zoning, Board of Zoning Appeals once, and then it went through it twice. Uh, same vote. It was like 6 to 2 or 7 to 1 or something like that. And then it came before the town council last night. And the first time it went through, 
there was a technical glitch, but they voted in favor of the rezone. So in favor of putting the, sen the senior living facility there, three to two. And I think it was the same vote last night, Mayor. Which is terrible. Not, 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 not shocking. Shocky, shot. Shocking. Shocking. Shot. <laughs> That's uh, funny, nice. Right? That would have been shocking if we would have turned one of the votes that was voting against the farm to coming in for the farm. But it's really sad, actually. Scaringa Farms has been farming that land for generations. It's... You know, Highland is, I mean, and for those of you that aren't from Northwest Indiana, Indiana isn't really, like where we live, it's very, it's very urban. Urban, sure. Yeah, we're in Chicago. And then we do have little patches of farms here and there. And the little farms that we do have, people fight like mad to keep them farms. And this is a perfect example of it. Yeah, and don't forget, I think the one thing you got to remember is they still have like 15 acres that they farm. This was extra land yeah, that they like, wanted to keep. How like much? the hay rides and everything else is on the current my understanding is on the current footprint. Right, but there's like a, yeah, but it's probably an extra 10 acres, 15 like, acres. Yeah, 15 to 19 acres, I think. That's going to be converted into senior living facility, which so, there you I go. know the Skringa family is devastated about this. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's a lot of people that live in that area that the farm is going to be significantly impacted. In, in fact, it may not even continue as a going concern because they're literally taking over half of the farming land. And I imagine if you're a farmer, I mean, believe it or not, I've never farmed in my life, but neither. Shocking. I know, right? I know. I strike you as that. But you come uh, from the land of vineyards, and you. Well, I used to eat grapes, but there you go. Anyway, <laughs> I did. By the way, you did your part. Yep. Was that a thing? Yeah, I bet. We used to climb the fence. Why wouldn't you? Grapes. We did it all the time. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, but they always have fertilizer, or they have like a spray on the outside. Pesticides. Oh, yeah. It was interesting. It probably gave me cancer. I hope not. Oh we'll gosh. Find out. We'll find out Jeez. soon. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, so Highland. Uh, <clears throat> Highland uh, voted three to two to demolish the farm, basically. So bulldozers are coming in. They're going to start building no, senior. Not, yeah, bull, oh, to build. Yeah, there's, to no, build. there's nothing to demolish. It's no, just but the like, land. It's, it's really sad. It's a sad story. The Skringas are a big family in northwest Indiana, and, you know, the door was slammed in their face, and it is not going to be their farm anymore, and, you know, now it's going to be a senior center. Yeah, I mean, my understanding, I mean, maybe someone have to correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is the farm stand will still be there, the, you know, other – amenities that they have on their current 15 acres is just the additional the acres. question is are they going to continue yeah to farm? are they going to continue i mean can you do it on half your land don't know if you're like barely making ends meet with an extra 19 acres and they take that away and it becomes a senior center can you make ends meet or good you question just, just going to fold the whole thing up we'll find out i don't know it's very sad but anyway we appreciate uh councilman shockey coming on here uh, it's a tough issue obviously you know, if that issue were in the city of Hammond, I'm glad it wasn't in the city of Hammond, but that would have been a tough issue for us as well. But thankfully, we don't have that many farms in Hammond. Not many. <laughs> I don't think we have any, actually. Um, I got to think about that. Go ahead and think about that, big I, guy. We might. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, Hessville used to be <laughs> a go farm. Ahead. Hessville used to be a farm. I agree. Hmm. I mean, like, it doesn't count. Think about if you have, if you grow carrots, in, there's still farms in Gary. If you grow far, if you have grow carrots yeah, in your backyard, it does not count. You have to have bunnies and cows and crap to have a farm. Mm -hmm. well, right? You don't have to have livestock for it to be counted Do they have as bunnies and cows and all that at Screen no, Farm? No. Okay. No, they no have one would argue be a crops. dairy farm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. I'm showing my farming I was going to say. <laughs> you, do, you don't need livestock for it to be counted as a farm. You need no. to make produce. Sure. Yeah. You can plant things. That's uh, farming. Attorney Kevin. Yes, sir. Question from chat. Uh-oh. Does it need to go through a plan commission for site plan review now? No, I think it's done now. I think it's done. Yeah, and if I, and I apologize. Council. I always get this mixed up between plan commission and board of zoning appeals, and the folks that practice in that area are going to know more than me. It may have gone through the plan commission for BZA or for a zoning rezone. Um, whether it has to go through site review, I don't know. That usually is internal within the planning department of the of the city or town. But that's just my get, my my call. Yeah. yeah. I saw our viewership drop by like fucking twenty during that whole thing. So. I, it was I a didn't question. mean to drop. I didn't mean to I drop answered. that f bomb. That was a natural. Actually, we're in uh, triple digits. Thank really, you. that was a natural f bomb. That was not premeditated. I at didn't all. even hear it. Good. It was just. It was natural. I was talking like to my friend Kevin. I wasn't realizing I was a mayor talking in a microphone. I was talking to my you friend dumbass. Kevin. You just dropped our <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Way to go. Hey, uh, we're going to be talking about the HB 1030, which is a Mike Brown accountability bill. We're also going to talk about the judicial retention, and then we're going to hit fire. Is we going to hit fire last or? It's up to you. Where do you want to go? Why don't you do the judicial retention bill and why this is Ooh, important? Wow. This is a big bill. It's and it's for those of you out there that there's only what, three counties in Indiana? Four. Four counties in Indiana that cannot elect their judges. Yeah, see that's the weird thing, right? Originally in Indiana, all judges were elected. And 
I don't want to get too much in the weeds on this because it may get a little bit confusing, but circuit court judges, which is the head judge in each county, is a constitutional judge like Marissa. She is elected, just like every circuit court judge in Indiana is elected. But we're talking about all the other judges right. that are appointed through a process called merit selection. Right. So okay. in Lake Right. In Lake County there's this committee. It's made up of attorneys and lay people. Like I think it's nine people. They get they interview people and then they send three people to the governor and he picks one of the three. That but only thing, exists in four counties in the state. And those four counties are the only counties in the state with minority populations. What counties are they? Lake County, St. Joseph County, Marion, Marion County. County, and what's the fourth? I'm a, is it? I want to say Allen. Maybe is it Allen? Fort Wayne. Someone's going to remind me. Okay, but, yeah, but there's, there's a fourth. But like all four are Democratic areas. Yeah, they're historically so like, Democratic. So picture areas. picture Northwest Indiana, Lindsay. <laughs> there so, are four. There's one in the top left. Right. There's one in like around South Bend. There's one in Indianapolis and slightly below. It's where all the black and brown people live. That's where you can't well, elect diversity, your judges. Diversity, yeah. The, That's the, where you can't elect areas. your judges. So like, <laughs> it, seriously, I mean, it's not. I don't know if they're doing it intentionally like this, but everywhere there's minority populations. The General Assembly does not allow you to elect your judges. Like in Porter County, our next door neighbor. We have people that work and live in both counties. We go back and forth all the time. In Porter County, every judge is elected by the residents. So if I live in Portage. You vote for Superior Court judges, Circuit Court judges. You vote. The residents of Portage. And if Porter I live County. in Lake Station, like and two miles And if you live in away? Lake Station, no, you're not smart enough in Lake Station to be able to vote for your judges. You have to go through a merit selection process. And that is the crazy. See, that because, argument. I keep hearing that argument. But could I? Could I yeah, put, yeah. The reason is, if we elected judges in Lake County, they would all be Democrat. Because Lake County is a Democratic area. And you can't have Democratic judges in Indiana. Oh, so forbid. what we're going to do is make sure that there's no damn Democratic judges in Indiana. So all you black and brown people, all you poor people that live in these counties that we designate the supermajority, you cannot elect your judges. Because if you do elect your judges, you'll elect judges that look like you. And you'll elect judges that have a D by their name and not an R. So we're not going to let that happen. And, you know, here's the thing. I mean... People argue a couple of things. One, they say, well, merit selection has been good. We have a good bench. Absolutely. We've got great judges. In we do county. have a good bench. It doesn't mean it's good fair. Bench. Right. I mean, we have. I wouldn't for a second say that judicial nominating commission has resulted in bad candidates, which, by the way, Representative Aylesworth basically said, we need better candidates. Dude, and, which that is, is so insulting. Insanity. We have such good judges in Lake Absolutely. County. Absolutely. And I'm not the justifying the system. I think it's That's unfair right. the way we do it. But to say the judges that we have in Lake County are bad is just insane because yeah. the last few judges we had, Attorney Cantar was former corporate counsel for the Love city. Hammond. She's, She's one of great. the smartest people I know. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Sam Sheely. I know him. He's an amazing judge yep. and he's an amazing lawyer. Bruce right? Parent. Judge Bruce Parent. Cedia, right. Judge Hawkins. By the way, Lake on County, on on. we elected a pretty damn good judge in Lake County on our own. The circuit court judge, Marissa McDermott. Yeah, She's, She's one of the cool. smartest. What do you know? The voters were able to pick. So like, that's the thing is like, this is if we elected judges in Lake County, they would be Democrats. They would, because that's what we are in Lake County. But the supermajority, they make us go through this arcane merit selection system. And now that's not even good enough. <laughs> now it's <laughs> like, we don't like crazy. the results of this merit selection system. So we're going to make it. So basically, the governor gets to pick. So, yeah. Judges. So now that there's a bill that just got through the House and it's sent, it's by uh, Representative Aylesworth. I think Representative Slager know. had something to do with it. He's Representative Aylesworth work doesn't know squat about Lake County. Judges. I heard him. I heard him on the committee. I was like, "Do you have marbles in your mouth?" I was Let, like, "This guy is this presenting guy, this bill." I know him. He's a nice old man. Okay, well, he doesn't have a freaking clue about this. He doesn't have a goddamn clue. You know what this is coming from, Kevin? I'm going to tell you. This is coming from a county council person whose wife got bad grades from the bar. This is where this whole thing's coming from. This county councilman happens to be very close to Representative Aylesworth. And they floated this bill. So Ellsworth at first says, this is the governor's bill. Governor's like, I don't Governor want nothing to do with this. himself from him. I want nothing to do with this bill. He said, bill, I didn't ask for this bill. This is all about a county councilman. I'm well, going to right. I mean, say it. My speculation, Christian Jorgensen, county councilman, goes to Mike Ellsworth and says, this is a bullshit system. My wife can't get through, and I want her to be a judge. And Ellsworth floats a bill. That's how it works. Something's up. That's how and it works. So, so the current system is attorneys that are elected to the Judicial Nominating Commission, and then there's lay people that are appointed, I think, by the city, uh, the county council, the county commissioners. The new bill that Aylesworth floated is three appointees by the governor, Governor Holcomb, Republican governor, and two appointees by the commissioners. And then they're going to send more people down to the governor to pick. Five. Now, see, it's crazy. I mean, to me, if you're going to do that, then you better do it for all 92 counties. That's right. You can't do it for, for two. And this, by the way, doesn't even affect the other two. It's two counties. Lake and St. Joseph County is all it affects. I'm going to say something right now on there as a promise, and I'm talking as a mayor of the city of Hammond, Kevin. It's going to get sassy. 
No. Here Strap we go. It. If this bill passes the Senate, it's already passed the House. If this bill passes the Senate, I'm going to file a lawsuit against the state of Indiana. Governor's got it. You mean if the Do governor it. signs it? If the governor signs yeah. If it passes, I am going to file. I'm going to be a plaintiff. I'm going to file a lawsuit against the state of Indiana as a resident of Lake County, as an attorney from Lake County. And it's like some type of equal protection argument. It's ridiculous. Like if you're a Democrat, you don't have any say in who your judges are. But if you live in Porter County, that's like 10 miles to the east. Oh, no problem. You can vote for your judges here. You're smart enough in Porter County to vote for your judges. But you, you know, you poor black and brown and, and poor people in Lake County. Sorry. You guys can't vote for your judges. The governor's got to pick I, your judges. I think it's a ridiculous argument, and I've heard even lawyers make this argument that, like, well, you know, it's a it's a good vetting process, and we, it, it, you know, it used to be terrible in Lake County in the seventies. It was BS. so corrupt. That's and BS. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. So you're saying that these same voters have the knowledge to decide who their recorder is and their auditor right. is right. and their assessor because they have so much knowledge about what the recorder, auditor, and assessor. It are, but you, you can't right. vote for judges. I just think it should be one way or the I other. I think the governor should pick one our mayors, One way or too. the other. Governor, I, I think you should pick our mayors. You should pick everybody. <laughs> he would never He's going to be in charge of the Indianapolis Police Department. <laughs> I know. They're taking over the Indianapolis Police Department. <laughs> they're taking over the judges. Like, I put a flag at half-mass for in honor of Susan By. You're not going to be able to They're going to be a bill. Aylesworth's going to float a bill very soon. <laughs> you are not allowed to put your mask down. If you're going to put your mask down, you have to go to this committee that's run by the governor and ask them for permission. How about the... How Screw about the, you guys, How man. about the General Assembly overriding the governor's veto yeah. about uh, rental registration, I know. Rent, rental uh, rules? I know. So stupid. It's ridiculous. So anyway... Anyway, that's out there. Follow the super it. super majority. It's something that you should be aware of. I mean, again, I think it should be one system. If it's all going to be retention, then have it 92 counties that have this system where you, the governor picks do I'm it gonna, that way i'm going to be the first person to file a lawsuit against this bill if it passes so do it. in a perverse kind of way i'm sort of hoping it passes because it's so it's so unconstitutional it's out there so my goal in life would be what kevin just said i think all 92 counties in indiana should have the same rules on electing judges and if or it's good them. enough if it's good enough in porter county it's good enough in lake county it's good enough in marion county it's good enough in st joseph county and i'm going to go around to my fellow mayors and i'm going to try to get them to sign on to this lawsuit or you know or vice versa if, it, if the judicial nominating commission is is good enough in lake county and in st joseph like county then everywhere. be it have it be everywhere That's if i right. live in if i live in jasper county and there's superior court judges there have them be a judicial nominating commission and the governor pick. That's right. I mean, that's how it should be done. And it's got, and by the way, this has got nothing to do with our bench. I, I think we have great judges. And, but this is just more of a I do, constitutional I issue. do think we have great yes, judges. Yes, we absolutely not, do. I don't like the process we have to go through to get them. I don't think it's fair, but I'm not arguing that we have great judges. I don't we like do the a, two tier system, the two different no, systems. I don't like getting treated differently than somebody that lives right next door to us. I don't like that. It's, it, it's unconstitutional. Everybody knows it. You know, it's unconstitutional. You're supposed to treat every county equally, and we don't. And it's the only counties that aren't treated equally are the Democratic voting counties. And this isn't the first time that this, this has happened. There have been multiple laws and, and ordinances that have been put against us, Lake County. It's my specialty, is filing lawsuits against these. We're yeah. doing it. In, There's no reason for you to be selecting certain counties through a, a, it's a un, plethora it's of counties. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, tell me why. Tell me why Lake you know County. Why. Well, of course. I mean, you know why. Give me an actual reason. Like The reason why is because we vote Democrat here. And if we have, if we elect our judges, they'll be Democrats. And you can't have Democrats in Indiana, right? I What's just, going well, on here? If you guys voted Republican, we'll give you, we'll give you control of your judges back. But I, until you vote Republican, we're not going to treat you the same as the rest of the state, Lake I, County. I thought it was really interesting, Brian Howie. I'm sure you saw it, Mayor, in the uh, over the weekend, his article about the competitiveness and the competitive nature of the General Assembly between 2010. And I'm sorry, 2001 and 2010, and then 2011 to 2020. Right. It was like it went back and forth. Democrats had control of the House. Republicans right. had. Now it's since 2011 to 2020. It's because it's, it's like true. over 50 percent of the state reps don't even have opponents. Right. That's how they've drawn the district. Right. It's crazy. So. so. All right. Well, that's that. I've. I've. I think uh, firehouse shenanigans should be next, and then we're going to go to the Mike Brown accountability bill, House Bill 1030. How about that? We'll wrap sure. up with the accountability bill. Or do you want to wrap up with firemen? Uh, up to you, people. Let's do. You want to keep state house since we're okay. On it? Let's right. go. Yeah. Mike Brown accountability bill, House Bill ten thirty. And we're talking about Mike Brown, the recorder, former not, Lake yeah. County recorder. He's a friend of mine. He had some issues when he was like county recorder. Not the Mike Brown Gary Council. No, not the Mike Brown. This is Mike Brown who lives in Michigan now. He's in the Upper Peninsula. Wow. But this bill was floated specifically because of his instance. He was county recorder in Lake County and had attendance issues. Let's just keep it that way, right? So this is a. Also, was this floated by Ellsworth also? Uh, it, it is. Yes, it Son is. Son of a gun. Ellsworth, yeah. <laughs> so, He's busy. Floated to make county officials accountable. 
forces county officials to show up for work, and if not, then they can be removed from office. Ellsworth won committee approval Wednesday for House Bill 1030, creating a multi-step process for vacating an elected county position when the officer, office holder fails to come to work without explanation for an entire month. Under the plan, which now goes to the full house, removal would be initiated by the county commissioners following an investigation and public hearing on the office holder's absenteeism. If two of the three commissioners agreed that the office holder should be removed, the county council would then conduct its own investigation and a supermajority of council members would be required to remove the official who could steal the appeal or removal to the courts. <sighs> That was a lot. That Why was a does it have to go down to Indianapolis? Why can't the county just no? Fill this the is no. This themselves? is all within the county. County commissioners would. Oh, make okay. Because so, it sounded like it was like down I mean, south would no, make that decision. It's the commissioners. So they're basically setting up a system to say, "Hey, if you don't show up for work, and if which you're is a county fine. official, which is fine. Sure. First off, like even if we had removal, right? Like first off, so I can miss work for a month as mayor, and this doesn't apply to me. I can miss month work for a year as mayor. And this bill doesn't touch me. Well, what the hell? If the we're going to float a bill. But like what I'm saying is if we're going to float a bill, let's float a bill. Why doesn't it apply to you, Representative Aylesworth? What if you don't show up to work? What if you're a senator, Representative Aylesworth, and you don't show up for two out of three years? There's no bill that addresses that situation. And we have that situation with my senator in Hammond. We talked about it on previous shows. Like, why can't your bill, Representative Aylesworth, apply to you as a representative and apply to your colleagues in the Senate? Because then we could remove somebody who hasn't been there two out of three years. So why do you think they're just picking on county officials? Because they don't want it to apply to them. It's good for you, but not good for me, right? The theme of the legislature this yeah, year. Yeah, this is good for you, but don't apply those rules to me, right? We have a senator in Hammond that hasn't been there two out of three years. Two out of three years he's missed. And this doesn't apply to him? I can't remove him? Like, give the voters the power to remove me from office. Give the voters the power to repeal. Do you mean, it, you mean besides every four years? Yeah, right. So like, like they're doing a in California. Like, well, like recall. In Wisconsin. Recall. And, and in California. A lot Have of a recall. States. Have a recall of you, Representative Aylesworth. And if we don't like what you're doing, we could recall you. How about that? I'll do it. I think my voters like me in Hammond. I'm not worried about a recall. Put a recall out there for every elected official. If you're going to fix this, don't fix it on me and not fix it on you, Representative Aylesworth. Do you know if recall is, um, con is that like written in the Constitution in California or is it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Kevin. I don't know if that's it's a, probably just statute. Yeah, I, I don't wonder. think back in the day when they were creating the California Constitution, they were talking about recall. recall. I guarantee you, I don't, that's I don't a know statute. if that's constitutional or statutory. Interesting, because yeah. they tried. Didn't sure. they try to do it to Governor um, in Wisconsin a while ago? Yeah, they yeah, did. Scott, didn't they? Well, they did, but he beat barely the recall, won. Right? Yeah, he barely beat the right. recall. So I think recalls are good. Let's have a recall for all elected officials, including you, Representative Aylesworth. Weren't they talking about trying to do that to Newsom? Yeah, they are. They are in the process of doing it to Newsom. He, you have to get. It's a tortured process. You have to get X amount of signatures, and then if you get the signatures, then you have an election. And it goes in the ballot. Yeah. And California has a really active like uh, prop proposition ballot, sure. right, where yeah. that process, where you yeah. can get a— It's like referendums, like what we call referendums. They're and we don't have those in Indiana. No. no. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh, I'm not saying that the idea behind the bill, if you don't show up to work for a month— you're a slug, in my opinion. No offense to anybody that doesn't show up to work for a month, unless <laughs> there's like sickness involved or something like that. Like, I go to work almost every day of my life. I'm literally I buzz into city hall almost every day of my life. So like that's even my on job. On the weekends, even in the Dude, evenings. On Sunday night, I go to city Christmas hall. On Christmas Eve, nice he and quiet. goes to city hall. I do. I was, he, he, what was the last holiday that you went in? Um, I, I go all the time. <laughs> I go. I'd rather be in city hall. No, you went in. You saw the, the the police officer was like. Keeping an eye on the building. Right? That was MLK Day. Yeah. That was, that was yeah, MLK. it was like a day off. Yeah. Nobody was at the building and he walked in and there was a guy there that scared the crap Captain out of him. Captain Rob Bunner scared well, the crap out of me. <laughs> I know you like those days because they're quiet and get some work done. I get a lot of work done on the weekends. That's when it's best time to work. All right, we've been pushing this off all show. Yeah, let's go. This is a disturbing story. It's, a, it's not a fun story at all. It's a sad story and I'm basically, I want to see how you guys feel about it you guys in the studio and also i want to see how you guys in the audience feel about it because this is a story i'm going to tell you what i'm being told and i want you to have some input on this okay i have a firehouse in the north part of our city in the robertsdale section we call it station two this firehouse in particular has had incidences in the past where there was jokes made by firemen that have gone too far like borderline racial sometimes not even really borderline but approaching racial um we had a problem in this house a couple of years ago so much so that we had like sensitivity training for everybody that lived in that house, for the captains, and we were instilling a culture into them that this is 2021 and you can't make these types of jokes. And, you know, firemen used to do this kind of stuff, but you got to be more professional now. We live in a different age. 
And we went through this training a couple of years ago. And quite frankly, most of the problems we had at that house started to go away until a, about a week and a half ago when it was discovered that we happened to be wiring up this house with a fiber optic cable. And one of the office, one of the build uh, one of the offices in this firehouse is locked and in that office is where the union official keeps pension records so it's like p personal information so yeah, not a not a room that is used very often fire. yeah it's not used by the firemen at all no, even though it's in the house not the on duty folks. no nobody on duty ever gets into this mm -hmm. office it's literally a private office because it stores records okay and the only person really with access to the office is one of these firefighters that we're not going to name because this is a target of an investigation right now so he's got the key to the office in there is a bunch of records and nobody ever goes into that office really it's just it's in a firehouse but nobody uses it that's where we keep records right so we're we're wiring this house for fiber optic cable and they need to get in the office and the firefighter with the key is not there and they're like okay this lock is bs anyway let's just jimmy the lock open we'll go in there we'll string the cable and we'll lock it back up and we're done right so one of our firefighters unfortunately in this case is, is African-American firefighter. Jimmy's the lock open. And when he opens the door, he discovers a noose hanging on the wall in the firehouse, like a noose, like a hangman noose hanging on the wall and a bunch of like pornographic images drawn on a chalkboard in there, like juvenile kind of, kind of stuff. But obviously the noose is speaks for itself in my opinion. Well, we get to the bottom of, well, first off, there's really only one person with access to this office, okay? So obviously this person's got a world of hurt coming. He's got some serious explaining to do. And as we dig, we get the Hammond Police Department involved, obviously, okay? In a case like this, it could be a hate crime. I don't internal know. Internal affairs. Well, yeah, internal affairs, excuse me. They get involved and they start interviewing firefighters. And, and they're still interviewing them. Yeah, well, I think that's pretty wrapped up. I, I don't. I haven't seen a report. I yet, haven't but, either. There hasn't been one. But basically, know. the firefighters' excuse for this news hanging on the wall is this is not racial at all. This is a joke that we play on each other in the fire department. Is go hang yourself, and it's a joke. <laughs> Isn't it funny? <laughs> go hang yourself. It's I, a news. <laughs> I mean, if that's the excuse, I think the that biggest is their issue, excuse. If, it, if that's the biggest, I mean, if that's what they're saying. I think to me, it just goes into the category of like tone deafness, right? Like in today's day and age. It's you may think you're it's assuming funny. you believe them. You're assuming you believe. Yeah, them. yeah. This is just for the discussion here because I have no idea. I haven't seen the. Do report. you believe them? I, I have no idea. I haven't seen the report. Right. I'm I'm waiting to see, see what the report says. But what I would say, Mayor, is if in fact that is their argument, then I think you're in the category of are you aware at all of what's going on in the world? Because you can't. I I just I guess the problem I have with it is if someone said to me, "Go hang yourself." Here's a noose. I'd be like, I don't want that. Get that away from me. I don't know what the F you're talking I'd about. i punch him. I'm like, well, it's like, what are you talking about? Yourself. I mean, like, you're giving me a news. Instead like, of like, I'm not going to take it, would, it and be like, oh, I'm going to hang oh, this up. Oh, this is so funny. It's I'm going to hang it on the wall. It's like you have to be just tone deaf to what's going on you in the world. You have to be flat freaking stupid. And, and, and just kind of like not um, like, I'm understanding hang it right of here. what offends <laughs> people. I'm not going to hang something up. I'm not going to take something or participate in a joke, even if somebody else thinks it's funny that offends people. I'm going to try to avoid those situations. And it's so horrible in this case because the firefighter that found it was African-American well, firefighter. It just, it just adds to the but, insult. Insult So you injury, talk to this right? firefighter, and this is, such, this is a great guy. This, this firefighter, is, I, I love this guy. And if you talk to him, he'd be like, man, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. You know, like, let's just, I don't think he meant it like that. Like, that's the kind of firefighter he is. He's just a great guy. He gets along with people, and he doesn't want to see a fellow firefighter get fired, which is what's going to happen. But, like, it's so embarrassing to have to justify to this firefighter that, sorry you have to put up with bullshit like this, Brandon. It's freaking sad that you work with imbeciles that think that this is funny. Well, go hang yourself. Here's a hangman news. Yeah, I mean, I, I talked to my Afri African American police chief, Andy, and I said, Andy, what does that mean to you? And he said, it means lynching, Mayor. I'm like, that's what it means when I see it. And I, I think, think of lynching. And I think that's the thing that is, to me, I, I want to say it again. I hate to keep saying this, but it's like tone deaf. It's like, if you don't know that symbol, what that symbol means to a certain segment of our population, it really should mean to everyone. I'm a white guy, then, and it means that to me. Right. So if you, if, that's, if you don't know that, and you don't know how offensive it could be seen by somebody else, you're just out. You just don't know what's going on in the you're, world. You're being nice. You're too stupid to be a firefighter. Well, you're too stupid to be a firefighter. I don't you know. are. You're it's... too stupid to be a fi Hammond firefighter. You don't deserve this job. You don't deserve the great pension that comes along with it because you're freaking stupid because you hang a noose on your wall and you think that's funny. You're a dumbass and you deserve everything that's coming your way. And it's coming because this Thursday, Kevin, we're filing charges. Is that true? 
Um, I want to. I'm checking the statute to make sure that everything that you would like to bring before the Board of Works and Safety is accurate. Yes. So, like, my Soon question enough. is this. John, Lindsay, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I'm sure you're aware of this. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you're the mayor in this case? Because I think there's no way I can't fire this guy. Well, like, I mean, in any other working situation, like Kevin, if you walked in and saw a noose hanging on somebody's cubicle, you would probably step in pretty damn quickly. If I mean, you walked into, you know, Sandy's office and she's got a noose hanging on the wall, <laughs> Kevin. And you're, Why are you and picking you're, on Sandy? Because I'm using her because she's closest. <laughs> she's so you walk into Sandy's <laughs> office and she's got a hangman noose on her wall. You say, oh, that's pretty funny, Sandy. I, I love that. That's a great joke. <laughs> Go hang yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, right. But I mean, with um, with firemen and policemen and everybody, and there's a process, and I know that, you know, the process has to play out. The Board of Public Works and Safety is the hearing um, body, and we're going to see where it goes. Well, so, I, mean, you, I tell you what you, I want. You, I, I, understand. I don't think this person could ever work for the Hammond Fire Department again. I just don't. Like, I don't see how I could look at Brandon my friend, I don't think I can look at my police chief. I don't think I can look at any of the African-Americans that live in our city and say, I'm doing a good job for you by letting this guy back on the force. He wants me, by the way, this guy wants me to sign on to him and say, oh, just give me punishment. You sign on with me and we'll go. I'm not going anywhere with you, buddy. Like, I don't even hardly know you. And what I do know about you, you have a goddamn hang, hangman's noose hanging on your wall and you want me to, to be your buddy on this? Screw you. You're on your own, big guy. You it's know, real funny. You and your fireman friends could go drink and talk about how goddamn funny this is. But that guy's history, man. And there, and of course, like like we said, you know, obviously the process has to play out, and um, well, it sounds like that's what you want to. Have well, that's coming from where I am. Obviously, we yep. have a process. Yeah, absolutely. How and, could he come back to work for us? And then, by the way, what kind of signal does that send to the fellow fireman? You could put a hang noose, hangman's noose on your wall and get a little slap on the wrist. Well, I think that's the danger, right, is that, you know, there's accountability here. We talk about accountability all the way up to the president or former president. And it, when, you, when there's actions and things happen, there's accountability. And I think the process will play out and we're going to, you know, make sure we follow the rules and do our best to make sure that the process is a fair one and then see what happens. Okay, so we're like, okay, where did this news come from? It was given to me. It was given to you by somebody else? Yeah. Who? I, I'm not going to tell you. You're not going to tell us who gave you the news. No, I don't want to get one of my fellow firefighters in trouble. Well, let me rewind an episode here. I have a situation involving had the rewind. Notice. another another situation involving an employee where this employee worked in another department. Let's just say it's public works. I'm just throwing it out there, right? This employee got in trouble in a public manner, all right? And the cops got involved. And when the cops got involved, this guy was sort of stonewalling. One of my employees was like, I'm not talking to you, cops. I'm not giving you this information. And we fired that guy. And the, like literally the day before his, his termination became official, he gave the police department everything they needed because he knew if I don't work with the police department, I'm getting fired. And there's no doubt in my mind I'm getting fired. So he gave everything he needed to the police department. And this, now we have a firefighter that says this noose was given to me by one of my fellow firefighters. Who? I'm not telling you. <laughs> okay. You don't want to tell us? No problem. I Take mean, it easy, big guy. And then we'll, again, let the process play out. But I, I know you're angry about it. I can tell it's beyond angry. Yeah. You know, by the way, like, well, by the way, a lot of it, you know, like what, pe and this is something that, you know, we understand that people that work in city hall know this, this stuff ends up on the mayor's lap. Well, it's my fault. And it ends like up when it comes to me, I either condone this bullshit or I'm going to have to hammer this guy. That's my two choices. There's no middle ground here. I either slap this dude on the wrist and say, go back to work. <laughs> Funny joke. Or I fire him. What else could I do? There's no middle ground. If I talk to people in the minority community in the city of Hammond, it's no doubt what they say needs to be done. And I've talked to plenty of people in the community. I've talked to council people. I've talked to ministers. I've talked to, you know, employees. And they're like, that stands for lynching. There's zero tolerance for this type of behavior. And if you talk to this guy's friends in the fire department, they're like, oh, he's such a good guy. He's not racist. He would never do something like that. This is all <laughs> funny fireman shit. <laughs> Isn't it funny, Mayor? Yeah, it's I mean, like, it, it definitely falls in the category of, of being tone deaf and not aware. It's, just, it's flat fucking stupid. That's what I'm sitting here thinking, Kevin. Is, <clears> so is, the, the alternative stupid. is if, if there's no like racial insensitivity involved at right. all, right. and it's complete tone deafness, that's also what's the t what's the indication there? Go hang yourself. What are they joking about? Suicide, suicide? or something? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's real funny. funny. And I yeah, saw Doty funny. just mentioned that in the chat too. Is and I was thinking the same thing was both explanations. <laughs> Are not good. Agreed. No. Well, Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, by the way, Marion, you've said this, and I, mean, I don't want to. I want to make sure it's very clear to everybody out there that you're not trying to paint the whole fire department with a broad brush Dude, and say there like are this. 150. You know, it's not like this. Yeah. It's a couple of dumbasses that are stuck in like 1940s and 1950s, and they still think that you can make racial jokes, and it's appropriate. 
you know, you guys are yeah. Because I mean, guys, our firefighters were. I mean, we only had to look on Sunday morning when they were fighting a fire out in the middle of the cold, and they're they're working yeah. hard, and we know that they work. Of course, hard. they are. And it's not a. It's embarrassing like, for these firefighters. Well, By they the have way, to answer to it too. Well, I, I go up there the other day, and I pull up to the scene of a fire, and there was two or three firefighters out there working. I was talking to him, and then another gentleman, African American firefighter. I went up. I'm like, I'm so sorry about all this stuff, and he's like, Mayor, like I appreciate it, but. It's like when you talk to the firefighters, they don't want to get into, especially the African-American firefighters. They're like, they don't want to see, you know, this is embarrassing. I think they to want to go department. to work, do their job, right. and, and talk be a dedicated about professional. Exactly. I didn't join the fire department to talk about race my whole career. No, I right? joined the fire department to save people and help right. people and put out fires. And, and I thought when I joined the fire department that I would be working with professionals that didn't look at me and say, you're a black guy. Well, and I think that's one you of know? the, you know, that's a, good, that's a good point is that, you know, when you're a fireman, when you're a policeman, when you're a teacher, when you're a lawyer, when you're a doctor, you're a professional. And there's a lot of other, I mean, I'm just listing a couple of professions, but you're a professional and you're supposed to act that way. And you're supposed to live up to that standard and it's like do you have a professional attitude or is there a culture that allows unprofessionalism to exist within certain right. professions <laughs> i gave him a noose isn't that yeah. great <laughs> but there's also there's also that facet of the situation <laughs> where if you're like african-american you're a minority in a majority let's say white department collect, yeah a collective unit and Either you see it happening and you report it and suddenly you're ousted because that's the guy who snitched. That's right. Or you ignore it and you're there with people who are pretending that it's not, that right. it's totally fine and it's not. That's because, what I feel sorry for. Like Lindy. you have to be stuck in that situation where you either are going to like snitch and tell and get. Right. And you shouldn't be Justice placed in that situation. Or, that's right. My buddy, the one, I mean, the, the gentleman that found the noose. It's an unfair position to be in. It is because he doesn't want to be a, like Lindsay said, a snitch. And he doesn't want to get people in trouble because he likes these people. And, and these they, are people you work with every right? day. Right. And at the same time, it's so ludicrous that this guy has to deal with this nonsense. Like right. you're finding a noose at work and that's funny. That's funny. Are you freaking insane? The guy that did this is so stupid that like he doesn't deserve to be a firefighter. Well, the how, fact could, that how was, could I bring him back? It was in a locked room. He knows that it's not okay to have it out with people seeing. He knows that if people see it, they're going to have an issue with it. That's why he has it well, behind the locked he, door. He that's said, an interesting that's interesting, Lindsay. Because like if he I knows, was him, he if, just he's playing ignorant. And it's, well, he said that uh, I got that. Some fireman gave it to me years ago. Who's the fireman? I can't tell you. But when I got that years ago, I put it in a drawer and I left, and I haven't been in that office in a year at least. And they're like, "Oh, so you're saying somebody broke in and framed you? They broke into your office, they took your noose out of ridiculous. your drawer, and they hung it on the wall, and then they and then they probably drew all the pornographic images on the wall, and then they closed the door and let it sit there and wait until that one day that." Or a firefighter was going to go like in there and find weird, it, right? Violent shrine. <laughs> it's like he sounds like a Trump voter to me. He's like, like, he's like one day, with reality. <laughs> one day they're going to have to run fiber optic in this room. <laughs> 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 they're going to find it, and it'll they're be. I can't wait for that. IT. Oh You're behind it, John. The IT department. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? We didn't think about that. The Vesmar part of this. It's the IT department that caused all this. Oh, they were planning on that. Yeah. No. I know the police department just wrapped up their investigation. I have not seen it, Mayor. I haven't seen it yet either. But so. I, I imagine, hopefully, I'll be seeing it today. And. I want this to move quickly. Like, I want the Board of Public Works to be talking about this. I want it this week, so. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, there's obviously a uh, statute and there's notice and things like that. So it'll it'll play through the process and we'll make sure to follow the statute. Of course, yes. but I know where I'm coming from. I'm driving I'm driving this train like a locomotive and, and I want this taken care of. I want people to look at the Hammond Fire Department and look at professionals of all colors, not just a bunch of white guys that make fun of, you know, minorities and that put racially insensitive stuff hanging it on their wall. It's out, It's out of control. It's time. It's time. I mean, we, we've been nice. We did sensitivity training. We did everything we could. Now it's time for the hammer. Well, we're going to find out what happens, obviously. And I think, at the you know, like we mentioned, at the very least, it's being tone deaf. And at the worst, it's it's exactly what it is. I think you're being nice for. by saying tone deaf. Yep. I think you're being too nice. Well, I, I mean, think it's stupid. I'm I saying that if you're you, just dumb, if you if you don't get it, like I think if you most don't people, get it, you don't get it. You're just not smart enough to be a firefighter. Comment in the chat. Firefighters just have an odd sense of humor. He should not lose his job. I was just about gonna, to reply to this well, guy. <laughs> yeah. Who, who is the person? Uh, David Meyer. Meyer. Yeah. All right. Well, well everyone, yeah, everyone has their opinion. Unfortunately for this firefighter, my opinion is going to carry a lot more water, you know, and I think this guy needs to be fired. That's where I'm coming from. 100 oh. for sure. Yeah. yeah that's, I definitely. think he needs to be fired. I don't see any way he can come back to work without causing major personnel problems and i don't want to be the mayor that brings a guy that is making racially insensitive jokes and hanging racially insensitive material in his office and thinks it's funny i don't want that guy working for me i don't want anything to do with it well we're going to be i'm sure it'll be in the paper and i'm sure we'll uh continue to hear paper. about it it's going to continue to be in the paper until this guy does the right thing and resigns 
or lets us do the right thing. Uh, it'll be at the Board of Public Works and Safety. So anyway, uh, always always exciting. Man, the city of Hammond, uh, that's part of the reason we uh, do this podcast, so we can talk about issues like this and see what you think. I appreciate the audience very much. Kevin, we got anything else? We're gonna Joe Donnelly on Friday. Joe Donnelly. That's going to be great. He's going to have a lot of things to talk about, and it's really interesting that Joe has such good in, I mean, he's got insight, insight into what happens in Washington. He knows it. He's been there. And plus, I'm sure what happened on January 6th just burned him because yeah. like, any American like Joe, like, you know, like any of us, like to see what happened to the Capitol on January 6th is unacceptable. And I want to ask him about like the whole like um, gerrymandering of his district and all that. I, yeah, that's, that's a, that was a funny story. Yeah. So we'll, we'll save it for that. the show. Yep. Awesome. Oh, David is a firefighter uh, from Shariville. Okay. That's what it says. Yeah. Interesting. He said he's a good. He said this guy's a good guy. He's I'm not sure. Racist. He, I'm yeah. sure. Okay. I'm, is David a white guy? Yeah. I've been uh, hearing a lot of white guys telling me the other guys totally aren't fine. racist. They're it's like, oh, offensive. he's not racist. It he's cool as hell. I drink with him after work. He's not racist at all. I hear that a lot from white guys. I want to I have, have a conversation to hear, with your minority friends if I, you have any. That's right. I like, want my African American friends I talk to and I tell them the story. They say that's lynching, mayor. That's exactly what that stands for. That's what they tell me. So like, I hear from a lot of Caucasians. It's, this is no big deal. But when I talk to African Americans and Hispanics, they think it's a huge deal. As do I. You know, as a person who is like who is a white person, you should really take a moment and try to understand how people outside of your race think about these certain things. Especially or, about lynching, where people get yeah, killed. Yeah, like or hundreds again, of people. Or were again, killed. if if this is just some sick sense of humor, then you gotta put it. You gotta nip it in the bud and say this is inappropriate. It's 2021. We gotta move on from this. What would you have done if somebody gave you a noose? I don't. I, I, first of all, I'd be like, I think I'd be pretty shocked <laughs> if someone handed me a noose. But I'd be like, I don't want this. Get no. it out of here. Throw it away. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's this funny. This is like paraphernalia. I mean, you have to. It's here, like you have to. We all know this, right? It, silence. Sometimes, sometimes silence. Even though it's silence is the easy way, and the it can be complicit, and you have to speak up. You have to, and it's not easy to do that. To root out problems, you got to like be part of the solution. You have to be part of the solution, and that's the that's the thing that that gets me is that again, I'm just I'm not making an argument for what happened. I'm just saying, if in fact there are those that say this was just a bad sense of humor, then fix it, fix it. Don't let this keep going but because it's, it's not acceptable. I'm not saying this incident. I'm just saying in general, well, change the culture. You knew about Station Two in particular, right? I mean, we you knew we had issues with this. So when I hear that the same exact station where we had borderline racial incidents happen before and we had tra sensitive tra uh, sensitivity training for everybody in that house and then to have an issue like this pop up at that specific house. Although, again, that was it, wasn't my last in the, it wasn't in the house, right? It was in this locked room. I'm, I'm, in I'm not, the house. Right, but it was... I don't think it's I want to... I don't want to say the fire it's under the same station roof. two. It's the, under the same roof. Sure. Okay. Right. And but I don't think the fireman at station two, like, for example, that the fireman that's involved in this wasn't even at that station. That wasn't his station. Right. So, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, there. I don't want to say like, oh, by the, the way, guy. everybody locally did the right thing, too. That's yeah. a good thing. The, yeah. the local captains did the right thing. The chiefs did the right thing. Every, it moved up chain of command the way it was supposed to. And, you know, that's the good thing is a lot of people did the right thing in this case. But the bottom line is there's still the element of the Hammond Fire Department that thinks this type of thing is appropriate. And that's got to be rooted out like a like a cancer. And I'm, I got the knife. A lot right. of people seem to think that racism only shows up as a blatant racism, like the KKK, right. mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. putting right. crosses in yards. And it, but that's not what it is. The majority of racism is under the surface. Right. It's implied. Right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a sidehand comment. It's and it comes out of ignorance. People All who don't bother, mm -hmm. yeah, people <laughs> who don't bother to educate themselves on the situation or put themselves in other people's shoes. The majority of racism happens either accidentally or subversively, and it's important for you as a person who is white to understand that, educate yourself, and be better, and teach other people to be better. That's right. So we can ask. And for that's good, what we're doing here. And anybody who lens. says anybody who says, "Oh, it's it's not really that big of a deal," the people who are saying it are white, and they are not educating themselves they're okay. ignorant All and right. they could be better yep thanks Lindsay. tough show yeah i mean not, not an not easy, easy topic and... but that was l the last week of my life and by the way i would come into the studio and act like this wasn't going on and have to swallow my tongue and not say the things i said for i think it was two shows where i was so tempted to bust this out and and then it started going public last week so obviously with it being public i want to tell my side of the story is like this is totally not not cool with us, not cool with the department, not cool with any of the people in charge. Like these people have been warned, this is not appropriate. And now it's time to get out the knife and dig out the cancer because we have a cancer in the Hammond firefighters, in the Hammond fire department. And it's a racial issue and it's a 0% policy.
All right. So. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this has been left to center. It's been a tough 49. show. Sorry, uh, sorry for the tough, the heavy topics <laughs> at the end. But uh, I want to say thanks to Lindsay McDermott, uh, Prosco for doing a great job, John Vesmar for doing a great job, Kevin Smith, my co-host, and myself. Thanks for watching LockPod. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave comments, do all that fun stuff, and we will see you on Friday, episode with, fifty, with episode fifty, episode L, <laughs> with uh, U.S. Senator Joe Donnelly as our guest. We'll see you Friday. Take care, everybody.